Did you know that the world's largest continuous empire was built by a man who started as an outcast in the harsh steppes of Mongolia? This is the story of Genghis Khan who rose from a life of hardship and exile to become one of history's greatest conquerors. Through his unparalleled military genius and strategic acumen, he united the Mongol tribes and forged an empire that stretched from the Pacific Ocean to the heart of Europe. Genghis Khan, originally named Temujin, was born around 1162 near the present-day border of Mongolia and Siberia. According to legend, he entered the world holding a blood clot in his right hand. His mother had been abducted by his father and forced into marriage. During this era, the Central Asian steppes were home to numerous nomadic tribes that were constantly at war, raiding and stealing from each other, making the young Temujin's early life chaotic and perilous. Before he reached the age of 10, his father was poisoned by a rival clan. Subsequently, Temujin's own clan abandoned him, his mother, and his six siblings to avoid the burden of supporting them. Temujin's early life was marked by violence and struggle. After his father's death, he took drastic measures, killing his older half-brother to become the head of his impoverished household. Captured and enslaved by the very clan that had abandoned him, Temujin eventually escaped and began to forge his path to power. In 1178, he married Bort, who would give him four sons and several daughters. When Bort was kidnapped, Temujin's bold rescue of her solidified his reputation as a warrior. He then began forming alliances and attracting followers, steadily building his influence. Defying tradition, Temujin appointed capable allies to key positions instead of relatives and executed enemy leaders while assimilating their tribes into his own. He mandated that looting could only begin after a decisive victory and organized his warriors into units of ten, disregarding family ties. Despite being an animist, Temujin's followers included Christians, Muslims, and Buddhists. By 1205, he had defeated all his adversaries, including his former close friend, Jamuka. The next year, he convened a meeting of representatives from across the territory and established a nation comparable in size to modern Mongolia. He was declared Chinggis Khan, meaning Universal Ruler, a title that the West would come to know as Genghis Khan. After unifying the tribes, Genghis Khan governed approximately one million people. To eliminate the usual sources of tribal conflict, he eradicated inherited noble titles. He also prohibited the sale and abduction of women, outlawed the enslavement of Mongols, and made livestock theft a capital offense. Additionally, Genghis Khan introduced a writing system, granted diplomatic immunity to foreign envoys, and endorsed religious freedom long before it became a common practice elsewhere. Genghis Khan's first military campaign beyond Mongolia targeted the Zhi Jia Kingdom in northwestern China. Following a series of raids, the Mongols launched a significant offensive in 1209, reaching the gates of Yinchon, the Zizia capital. Unlike other armies of the time, the Mongols moved without a supply train, relying instead on a vast reserve of horses. Their forces were composed almost entirely of cavalrymen, who were skilled riders and lethal with their bows and arrows. At Yinchuan, the Mongols executed a false retreat, a hallmark of their strategy, before laying siege to the city. Although their plan to flood the city was unsuccessful, the Zhi Jia ruler eventually capitulated and offered tribute. 
The Mongols then targeted the Jin dynasty in northern China after its ruler made the error of demanding Genghis Khan's submission. From 1211 to 1214, despite being outnumbered, the Mongols devastated the countryside, causing a flood of refugees into the cities. This led to severe food shortages, and the Jin army resorted to killing tens of thousands of its own peasants. In 1214, the Mongols laid siege to the capital, Zhongdu, modern-day Beijing, forcing the Jin ruler to surrender vast amounts of silk, silver, gold, and horses. When the Jin ruler moved his court south to Kaifeng, Genghis Khan saw this as a violation of their agreement and, with the aid of Jin defectors, raised Zhongdu to the ground. In 1219, Genghis Khan launched an invasion against the Khwarezm Empire, which is now part of Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, and Iran. The conflict began when the Khwarezm Sultan agreed to a trade treaty, but then betrayed it by allowing the first caravan's goods to be stolen and its merchants killed. Further escalating tensions, the Sultan executed Genghis Khan's ambassadors. Despite being outnumbered, the Mongol forces swiftly overran Khwarezm cities such as Bukhara, Samarkand, and Urgench. While skilled workers like carpenters and jewelers were often spared, aristocrats and resisting soldiers were executed. Unskilled laborers were frequently used as human shields in subsequent battles. The exact death toll from Genghis Khan's campaigns remains unknown. While Genghis Khan returned to Mongolia in 1225, he ruled an immense territory stretching from the Sea of Japan to the Caspian Sea. However, he didn't rest long and soon focused on the Zhejia Kingdom, which had refused to provide troops for the Khwarezm invasion. In early 1227, a fall from a horse resulted in severe internal injuries. Despite continuing the campaign, his health deteriorated. Genghis Khan passed away on August 18, 1227, shortly before the Zizia were defeated. Genghis Khan seized more territory than any other figure in history, facilitating interactions between Eastern and Western civilizations. His successors, like Ogedi and Kublai, continued this legacy of conquest, extending their dominion over Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and China, among other regions. The Mongols also attempted invasions of Japan and Kava before their empire disintegrated in the 14th century. The last of Genghis Khan's ruling descendants were overthrown in 1920.